Welcome back to Cinemation Movie Recaps. Today, I show you the movie Blindness from 2008. Beware of spoilers. The movie begins in a busy intersection where plenty of vehicles zooming by. When the light traffic lights go green, a Japanese professional suddenly loses his eyesight. Unlike the typical black sheet that's associated with blindness, his vision is entirely white. As expected, the rest of the civilians went wild honking their cars to show irritation. A couple of men approach, trying to inquire about what's happening to the man. Then a seemingly helpful and concerned man approached the first blind man and offered to take him home. The seemingly helpful man actually sees him home, but then steals his car after. When the first blind man's wife came, she took her husband to an ophthalmologist. The doctor examines him, but found nothing unusual in his man's eyes. That night, the thief, riding the stolen car, suddenly got into an accident because he too lost his sight. At the clinic, the doctor is checking a boy's eyesight for his glasses. The boy's nanny also had a prescription for her eyes and is ordered not to take off her dark glasses except while bathing and sleeping. At home, the doctor was giving an account to his wife about his day, particularly about the first blind man. The doctor mentioned that blindness is quite different because according to the patient, it's the opposite of normal blindness in which all things are blackened, but then in his case, what the first blind man sees is all white, like the lights have been left on. The doctor's first diagnosis is what is known as agnosia, a rare disorder characterized by the inability to recognize and identify objects or people. The doctor and his wife are a lovely and kind couple. Meanwhile, the nanny with dark glasses whose other job is to sleep with various men for small money, has lost her sight during a meeting with one of her clients. The next morning, the doctor finds the same symptoms, blindness. He concludes that he has contracted the first blind and that blindness is a contagious disease. At first, he tries to push his wife away because he doesn't want her to catch it too. But throughout the city, more and more citizens are falling ill with blindness. The clinic has been forced to close by the government. The disease causes a general panic, and the government organizes a quarantine for the blind in dilapidated homes. When a hazmat crew arrives to pick up the doctor, his wife lies that she has also gone blind to accompany him. The hazmat crew also confiscated the doctor's cell phone. The government calls the epidemic the white sickness. In the quarantine facility, the doctor and his wife are first to arrive and agree they will keep her sight a secret. The doctor's wife is disappointed with the quarantine facility because it's not comfortable nor friendly for blind people. Then sometime later, they are joined by the doctor's previous patients, which include the first blind man, the thief, the boy, and his nanny with the dark glasses. The thief and the first blind man fight because the former is blaming the latter for the chaos. The doctor, with the help of his wife, intervenes and calms the fight. With the help of the doctor's wife, they manage to reach the bathroom, but the thief continues to sexually harass the nanny with dark glasses, which outrages her. She kicks the thief, whereupon he injures his leg at the door. The doctor and his wife tend to it. Soon more blind people arrive at the asylum, and the first blind man is reunited with his wife. The doctor also becomes something of a leader in the first scenes of the film. At one point, he tries to inform the authorities about the injured thief, but instead of helping them, the authorities scare them by pointing their guns at them. The doctor's wife seems to be the only person immune to the blindness epidemic. At first, her biggest concern is taking care of her husband, but when she realizes the needs of the blind people, she does everything she can to help them without revealing her secret. The government provides a telephone in the institution as a means of communication, but the doctor's wife complains that every time she calls, only an answering machine answers. Food supplies are limited, and the authorities do not attend to their other needs. Soon, more confused and infected people are admitted, and news from the outside world paints a grim picture of chaos and panic. The asylum is now cramped and overcrowded, and the lack of outside support has led to a rapid deterioration in hygiene and living conditions. The doctor's wife is still doing her best to help them. However, the inmates began to worry about the availability of food, 
and the increasing hostility of the prison guards. In addition, they have limited information about what is happening outside until a man with the black eye patch shares news using his small radio. At this point, the white sickness has become international, with hundreds of cases reported every day. Planes collided, people panicked, and casualties multiplied. The government is resorting to increasingly ruthless measures to try to deal with the epidemic, including refusing aid to the blind. Some inmates died and food needs to be rationed. As some people, including the doctor and his wife, try to help and comfort others, one man assumes authority, proclaiming himself as the king of Ward 3 and opposing the house rules. Dead. He gains immediate popularity among his subjects by prioritizing food over his ward's community responsibilities, such as burying the dead. He even proclaimed himself as the administrator of the asylum, creating his own rules to be followed by everybody. One rule is that inmates have to pay him if they want to eat. When the rations arrive, they fight to the death to gain food. The king somehow obtains a revolver and uses it to bully other wards by controlling the food supply. He's demanding anything valuable from them like jewelry in exchange for food. Then, the king is particularly irritated with the doctor, so he reduced their food supplies. Due to this, Ward 1 with 35 people has only 24 packs of food, so they were compelled to share one pack between two people. The doctor begins blaming himself for this, which causes him and his wife to have a misunderstanding and the doctor to commit adultery with one of the inmates. After a week, their valuables are used up, and the king now demands that each woman prostitute herself for the men in exchange for food. Ward 1, which houses the female doctor, debates whether they will give in to the king's demand. The doctor says that it is now their own decision, depending on the morals that each has. Many women are willing to submit in exchange for food, but the first blind man says that his wife will not go because in his opinion dignity has no price. But then the first blind man's wife said she is no different than the other women in her ward. She too must submit in exchange for food. Nine women from Ward 1, including the doctor's wife, agree to have sexual intercourse with men in Ward 3 in exchange for food. The doctor's wife stares at a pair of scissors and considers whether she can kill the king with them, but also thinks about the negative effects and the chaos that this could bring. The king has recognized the voice of the doctor's wife and demands ridiculous things from her during intercourse. One of the men even hit a woman before she slept with him and she died. As a result, the doctor's wife takes revenge by killing the king with scissors and demands that Ward 1 control the distribution of food. One of the men from Ward 1 wants to meet the person who killed the king because he thinks that person can help them get food from Ward 3. The doctor's wife is about to admit that it was her, but the man with the black eye patch senses that it was the doctor's wife sitting next to him, holds her back and talks to the ward mates. He says they all have to band together to stand up to the men in Ward 3. They created a barrier in their ward while one of their ward mates went to Ward 3 and started a fire. When people from Ward 1 started to proceed to Ward 3, They've heard gunshots and smelled smoke. The fire spread, and many inmates were dying and bringing chaos to the blind. With the help of the doctor's wife, many were able to escape the asylum and survive the fire. The doctor's wife discovers that the guards have abandoned their posts. She screamed, we are free, so that the others will know. And with the doctor's wife's lead, they venture out into the city and saw that the society and the government have collapsed. She ushers her husband and the man with the black eye patch, the Japanese couple, and the boy into an abandoned house and leaves them there to look for food. But the doctor insists on accompanying her. Along the street, people are fighting for food. The doctor and his wife entered a grocery store where some blind people are fighting over food. The doctor feels guilty and at the same time grateful for everything his wife does for him. But his wife seems too tired to listen. She discovers a well-stocked basement room under the grocery store, but other blind people smell that she is carrying food, so with the help of her husband, she narrowly escapes the mob around her. When they are safe, her husband went back to the grocery store to get the coat. While she was waiting for her husband, 
a stray dog came to her and refused to leave. Then she goes into the church and sees many other blind people there, and she notices that all the saints have their eyes blindfolded. It suddenly starts to rain and people are enjoying the water. The doctor, his wife, and the others enjoy the food they had brought from the supermarket. They decide to stay there to spend the night and rest. Then she decides to take everyone to her house. Once home, she is happy to learn that no one has robbed her house since it is still locked. Once inside, she encourages everyone to change clothes. The women enjoy bathing together, and the doctor's wife says they are all still pretty despite their blindness. That night they have a decent meal and a decent place to sleep and toast to their new family. The doctor and his wife resume their loving relationship. The next morning, the first blind man regains his sight, which means that his body has conquered the disease and the blindness is only temporary. Everyone was overwhelmed with happiness. The film ends with the man with the black eye patch telling us that everyone else has also regained their sight. As for the doctor's wife, he says that the responsibility she carried finally fell away.